The focus is on the left shoulder and the gap integrity of the right hip. So we're, what we're trying to do is turn our core into a place to create stored energy. We're trying to take our body and just about create like a wash rag. As if you were wringing out a wash rag, we're trying to create energy, create torque. So the tsunami bar is off the right foot, the right instep. Notice it's off the right instep. It's almost against the right ear, but just barely off the right shoulder. And the first idea, the, the two, again, you want to use a mirror. Try to be sure the mirror is behind you. If you don't have a mirror, you want to reference the pictures. Remember, if you use a visual reference, you learn faster. And that's the first thing that I noticed about this backswing move is a very small increments of correct movement. And I'm going to say that again. Small increments of correct core movement makes a big difference in storing up energy that's available for the downswing and the backswing. So it's real simple. What you're going to do is look and see, and you've got, a, got your eye on the left shoulder and your right hip. And as you look in the mirror, you're trying to take this shoulder and move it to the tsunami bar. Now, notice Coach Tim. That's one of the, I gotta tell you, one of the things, he's incredibly muscular, but he's also incredibly flexible. In fact, that was the first thing that we had to talk about is how to control his amazing elasticity. Now, notice the gap space off this right hip. Notice the left shoulder. And the reason he's doing this is because I can't. <laughs> That's funny. Now, notice the stripes here on Rob's pants. Notice the right hip is pulling. The right hip pulls backwards to create this gap space as the left shoulder pursues the edge of the bar. Notice Coach Taylor's, <laughs> you might be exceeding. All right, so start all over. And as you turn, you're creating this torque. Again, the right hip, the right hip allows the left shoulder to move over. Be sure you're looking while you're seeing and feeling, this is called real-time training, you are accelerating turn improvement. With the knees slightly flexed and bent forward at the waist, you've got a slight spine tilt and you're using the tsunami bar as a reference. The bar's off the left shoulder. This is the back swing. The, and it's going to be our fourth picture on the tsunami bar conditioning. All right, so the idea is to watch. Remember, you want to use a mirror behind you if possible. If you don't use the mirror, use the pictures. The visual reference accelerates learning. Real-time training even accelerates that. So as we're working, we're focusing on the left hip, uh, excuse, the right hip and the left shoulder again, but this time we're adding arms. So we're going to work on the back swing. So as we turn, we're going to straighten this left arm. This is not just a back swing for core, but this is a back swing for sequencing. Now we get the extremities involved, the arms involved. We're trying to store energy, valuable energy, stored by the core to ultimately release an impact. But we've got to store it correctly first. Keep your eyes focused on left shoulder and right hip. Notice Coach Taylor, he's, he's pushing and turning. He's got this spine tilt. See this spine tilt? This is leverage. Now watch Coach Thames. You see these you see this, the stripes on his pants? Watch again. That's a major turn movement. As he turns, he's straightening his left arm. This is sequencing. You want the right hip and the left arm to reach its end simultaneously. That's good sequencing. Keep your eyes in the mirror if you have reference. So you push out and turn. Okay, so in addition to feeling the torque necessary for the core, Coach Taylor's got a little something. This is a little something that's winding up. Talk about this turning. As I'm pushing my arm out and I'm feeling this torque, I understand that it takes a lot more than just a strong upper body to do this exercise. We're actually working on the pelvic powerhouse, and you actually feel how hard your core is having to turn against your hips. 
So for Robbie and I who are used to doing squats and deadlifts, this is extremely difficult. But for you golfers out there that actually learned how to play golf first and now start to add strength and conditioning, you're actually coming from a better side of it. So enjoy the philosophy and tell your competition to look out.